everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some roving with dry acid dye powder. Today's video is sponsored by the viewer Jessica Parco. Jessica, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and I really hope we will create some stunning colors for you today. Now, the technique I want to play with involves adding some dye to the pot, then a little bit of roving, then some dye, and a little bit of roving, similar to how we might layer colors for some solar dyeing, but in a hot pot. And so I'm curious to see how this will all come together. Now, I did not invent this technique, and unfortunately, I can't find the source or the inspiration video that I had seen, I think, on Facebook somewhere. Um, but if I find that, I will add like a little bar um, at the bottom right here. Since we're dying with acid dye powder today, I will be wearing a respirator, which means my voice will be more muffled. All of the equipment is dedicated for dye and isn't used for food. So let's go get into it. Today we are going to dye 200 grams of Nitpick's Wool of the Andes Roving. This roving is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and it's probably the roving I dye the most frequently. I'm planning on dyeing it dry. We'll see how that works. It might be a little rough, but I, yeah, I want some more modeling of the color, some darker and lighter patches, and so I think, I think that that might give some cool effects. In my eight quart dedicated dye pot, I have 16 cups of water. And I'm gonna add six tablespoons of white vinegar. That's three, four, five, six. This is a bit more than I might usually start out with, but I do want the colors to absorb. We're gonna be adding random amounts of powder and then adding sections of the roving into the pot. I think that this could be really fun. I'm heating things up so that way it's nice and hot, but I will be reducing the temperature to low once we're ready to get started. This is the colorway I'm thinking of. Some tangelo, blued steel, golden poppy, and sage leaf. Now I think some of these colors may break. We might get some browns in there, and I'm okay with that too. So, hoo -hoo, let's go. I also have a yarn mop on hand. This is Nitpick Stroll, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I plan to wipe my gloves on it uh, as I get powder and stuff on them. So I'll be setting this aside just off camera. So I'm also wearing safety glasses and gloves. And I'm gonna come in with a jar, take a nice little pinch of powder, and sprinkle that on in. That's not very much, so I'm going to add another good old pinch for this first one and wipe my hand on the yarn mop. Um, so you can see I'm just wiping the glove on there. And then I'm going to take a couple feet of roving and add this to the pot. And let that color sink in. Ooh, I see it breaking, I see some yellow. That is really beautiful. Uh, you want to make sure your hands are completely dry before going back into the powder because you don't want to cause any clumping. But I'm now gonna come in and just sprinkle on a little bit more dye and then yeah I guess I guess we wait we're gonna sort of see where this takes us as we go and how quickly um, we're gonna go through and add more and more color in here but Man, I, I don't want to move it. I am going to rinse off my gloves so that way we can get ready for the next color. Sometimes you have to start to see how things go to know how you might want to proceed. Okay, so here's another layer of fiber. And there's no way that all of those greens have set yet, but... Yeah, we're going to layer fiber and color 
and sort of see how this speaks to us. Okay, so this is now some golden poppy. Um, and maybe it's a bit more orangey than I wanted, but hopefully it will also read somewhat yellow. And it's okay if some of this goes into the edges. Um, it goes down and touches the previous section. That is something that I have no problem with at all. Honestly, I thought as I was, was going to start doing this that I would sort of be trying to mix the colors in a bit, but I think that sandwiching the dye is a fun way to do it. Um, and then as I go and I press more dry fiber in, we can see some of that color spread up. And if it mixes down, that is something that we just don't really know. <laughs> But this is the reason why we started with plenty of acid. Okay, this is Tangelo, which is not the most orangey color, but I think mixed with some of this golden poppy should be pretty nice. It's a little bit of a pinky orange, but I don't know, I like it. Ooh, that is pretty. Um, so I'm adding strands sort of two at a time. So that way the 200 grams will be similar. And these colors definitely aren't striking that fast, but things also haven't dissolved yet. So there is that. Now coming in with the blue steel. This is sort of a navy-ish type color. Maybe it's cooler toned than navy is. That's sort of a lot. Ooh. I am loving these four colors together. I cannot wait to show you what the yarn mop is looking like. Um, goodness me. Okay, let's add the rest of this. But I'm seeing some of that orange. I want to press this enough so that way the roving can go in and get wet, but not too much to mix these layers completely. Oh, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I am thrilled. <laughs> okay, now, gosh, I guess now we sit and wait. There's a lot of color in here. I am so curious about what's happening beneath the surface. But just to show you, these four colors are beautiful together. I'm not sure how they will look if mixed necessarily, but on their own, they are gorgeous. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna set that aside. I might, I'm tempted to add a little bit more color to this, not a ton. Um, there's a fair amount of white space left but maybe just double the amount. Um, but we'll see what's gonna happen here. I think I wanna keep the heat on that low. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on the pan. I don't always put lids on my yarn, um, mainly because, well, I don't think it's always that necessary, um, but I wanted a lid today because I wanted I want to keep that heat trapped in and I think let's go ahead and wait 40 minutes. Um, that should give this lots of time to slowly set and I am excited. I decided to go ahead and add a tiny bit more color to this yarn. I like it being mostly white but I wanted just a little bit more coverage so I suited back up, put on some gloves, touched the powder in the container and then wiped it on the yarn 
rinsed my hands off, dried it, and then did the next color. Basically, this was as though I had just gone into each of them one more time um, to dye some other yarn. So it's not a complete mop because I added more color, but this should just give you a sense of this type of technique, which is one that I honestly love. Then I steam set this yarn on the stove top in a different pot because the one with the roving is a bit too full, but I steam set it for 30 minutes and let it cool completely so then I can wash it. It has been 40 minutes and I'm now going to turn off the heat. The water is clear. Obviously we're not looking at what's happening beneath the surface, but uh, I did check in about 10 minutes ago and the water looked to be clear then, so I am considering that encouraging. It's so hard, I want to reach down and pull it aside to see what's going on, but I am not going to. I am going to refrain. I am refraining. I, <laughs> I'll keep telling myself that. Anyway, I'm now going to set this aside and let it cool completely and slowly so that way uh, we won't risk felting it when we go to wash our fiber. The roving is cool and now let's take a peek Ooh, inside the pot. I see layers of color. What I'm going to do first is gently fill this up with some water as like a first rinse. Okay. Trying something different. Okay, I am going to gently pour out this excess water and move, then we'll move the roving into our wash basin. Okay, I'm now going to gently Plop the roving in here and ooh. So this is browner than I expected, but it looks like some of that blue and there's still a little bit of that sage, but some of that color came all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Um, I am not going to try to open things up more yet. This is really just a careful rinse. I'm not even gonna use soap. And the water is clear. Um, so what I'm going to do is carefully remove this fiber, put it in my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. So then we can actually take a look at what this colorway looks like. Um, you can see I'm being overly, overly careful, but I am excited by what we see. I should have filmed putting this in the spin dryer, but I just couldn't wait until it was dry to show you. This is awesome. One other thing worth mentioning is that that roving took hours to cool. But looking at that and then looking at this mop where we have still clarity of the separate colors because of just adding them one at a time onto this yarn, it's fairly striking in my opinion. Uh, but I mean the techniques are obviously super, super different. And so I think that this just goes to show that using the same colors in different ways can lead to vastly different results. And that's not anything new, but it's just worth pointing out again. Anyway, I just, I, this time I did add some dish soap. We're not seeing any bleeding. I am going to rinse out the rest of the soap, also put this through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This kind of color combination is very new for me, and it feels almost like a mossy sunset over a mountain or something. There's like a hint of green from trees, but maybe like a blue, almost stone type color. And then those really like orangey reds coming through. And the colors definitely muddied a bit because of the way that they mixed with the layering of the powder and the roving in the pot. But I think that this is so cool looking. The 200 grams is reasonably well matched. I mean, I did add them together so that way we could try to have it be fairly even, but just looking at it laid out like this so it'd be sort of a gradient is really fun. In my last roving video, you might remember that I was not thrilled with how the quality was, and here there is like little to no felting. This is about as perfect as I could hope for. So I am thrilled with the quality here. I do wish we had a bit more of the green left, and I wonder if 
I don't remember if I just added the green at the very beginning if I add, or if I added any powder on top of it. I sort of went by feel when it came to adding those colors on. So I wish after that initial green addition into the pot, I had added a little bit more powder before layering the rest of the colors. But this is a technique I want to try more and more and more. I mean, the color penetration we got is fantastic. There are some white patches around, but in the areas where we got color, it went all the way through. Speckled roving is not something I have been able to achieve <laughs> yet. Um, it's something I want to keep playing with and trying, but in general, even if I was using a superwash roving, I find when I add powder to it, it is able to wick through more because there's not a twist that provides a little bit of a resist from the colors spreading out. But the way that this is so splotchy, it's fun because when you spin it, these colors will blend a little more together and mix a little more, giving you some softer variation. Although ultimately it really depends on how you spin it and how much you pre-draft versus pluck. Uh, Jessica, I really hope you show what you create with this fiber. I think it is so pretty. In contrast with the roving, here is our yarn moth. And in here you can really see the green that more golden yellow, the tangelo, and what was it, gunmetal? Uh, you can see much, much more of those hues and how bright and pigmented they can be. So these colors absolutely softened onto the roving because they spread more and combined a little bit. But I am really into this color combination and I want to play with it more in the future. A lot of times with roving, I like to dye the fiber in braids like this in the way that I like to store it. And one reason for that is that it keeps things a little protected and adds some fun variation to the colorway overall. With this technique, I think it could be fun to add like a braid, add some dye on top, add another braid and do that with say, you know, I don't know how many you could fit in the pot reasonably, maybe 300 or 400 grams. Um, depending on if I use my bigger pot and that could be a fun way to create like a unique set of some roving for a larger project. Uh, this is something, yeah, I, I want to explore this so much more. Let me know what colors you think I should try. Uh, I, you know, going for things with more contrast and mixing warm and cool colors is not something I'm always like super comfortable with, but I love how this turned out and I want to play more with things like this in the future. I label my acid dye jars using some color swatches from a poster and I love having that as a way to pick colors, but the way that I store the jars, I don't see all the colors at once. So I think I need to make a little card deck of these individual colors so that way I can pull and play with color combinations directly and just arrange the cards and things that I think would be fun to play with. Uh, because I want to go out of my color comfort zone even more. And honestly, that's one of the points of my Chemnitz Dialogue is to try to push me out of my comfort zone. But yeah, I, I'm just really happy with how this one came out. Jessica Parco, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can help support the channel, uh, I do let viewers sponsor episodes of Dye Pot Weekly. Spots tend to be very limited and are frequently sold out, but feel free to message me on Etsy if you want to learn more about it. But I also have hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in these videos that are ready to ship in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, and you'll find a link in the video description. I also do have a Patreon and I have some limited merch over on Zazzle. But again, the biggest way you can support the content here is by subscribing, liking, commenting, turn on notifications, and engaging with the videos. Uh, watching the videos is honestly the biggest thing that helps support everything that I'm doing here. And so I really want to thank you all for watching and supporting my journey to improve and learn and play with different ways to apply color to yarn and roving and all different types of fiber. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.